to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Uh, by the way, uh, this show is available to you to watch on iTunes. All you have to do is go to the Bear Wozniak uh, site on YouTube and subscribe to the channel. And uh, you can see me and uh, our guests. And it just makes it more of a, an engaging way to, to be part, part of the broadcast. It's also pretty cool because you can share it with your friends and uh, kind of get a little viral thing happening so we can uh, sh uh, work together in the ministry of, of sharing, sharing the good news. I'm here in Cocoa Beach today. I uh, got to go up to Biketoberfest in Daytona last weekend and check out all the motorcycles. It's really interesting. When you're with bikers, you're with good people. Um, you know, and you go to, and you, you, you look around, you're at, we're at, at a pub, and then we stopped off at a, kind of an outdoor kind of pub scene. And all of them is these really bad-looking guys, <laughs> men and women, bikers but they're, they're the salt of the earth they're the best people they're generous as archbishop wensky says and um for the most part conservative people and so it was just really great kind of riding with the pack but we are members of a pack too we're members of the catholic church which is uh the biggest baddest biker gang there ever was i always think if if jesus after giving his poetry reading uh at the local starbucks called why can't we all get along I think that's what, how, how so many people picture God, Jesus anyway. If Jesus was here right now, you know, Jesus said, I have come to, don't think I've come to bring peace, but I've come to bring a sword, and I've come to bring a fire. And the way he divides us, divides people, the way he discerns our secret thoughts and intentions of the heart is by simply asking the question, who do you say that I am? And I always think if Jesus was a biker and he was here today, he'd take his motorcycle and, 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 uh, uh, if one of these bad biker gangs was heading towards him, you know how we all ride two by two, he would ride right down the middle of them and split them in half. He'd be, he's, he's, just, he's no pushover, you know. And uh, so we've got a couple men with us today that I would say are not pushovers. Uh, it's a really cool thing. I think this may be the first time in the history of our broadcast that we've done it, and I want to do it more. Uh, we have a father and son uh, combination with us. It's kind of like jab, punch, hook, uppercut. So we've got with us Alan Murray and Gregor Murray. Alan is the father uh, thank God, Gregor, you didn't get his 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 looks. That's all I can say. <laughs> uh, welcome to welcome <laughs> to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Thank you. Great to have, pleasure to have us here today. Um, okay, so, so that's Gregor speaking. When we, well, I'll kind of ask each of you individual questions, but yeah. I want to start with Gregor. So, Gregor, what kind of dad was your what kind of dad was your dad growing up? Just answer that for me. Very into athleticism with me. I um, mean, you know, always throwing the ball, always running. I was a young adolescent growing up with a lot of energy. Uh, growing up, I was—I had all the energy. I was more focused in athleticism than than the books at that time. The books didn't hit till till uh, believe it or not after high school and into college where I flourished. But growing up, you know, very spiritual. We'd pray together. We'd throw the ball together. Very just incorporated our faith and our athleticism together. And I think that too just really, you know, sparked the fire. And it uh, was a good combination for for me to grow and for him to, you know, engage in faith and athleticism at the same time. So it was a, it was a great, um, a great combination. I always love that when I'm walking on the beach and I see the father out body surfing with the kids or building a sandcastle with them. But I'm not so sure about how much your dad actually loved you because I've heard rumors that he used to tell you to go play on the train tracks. <laughs> Is that right? My dad used to say, Hey, why don't you go outside and play in the street? And I, Oh, okay, dad. I guess so. But he yeah. used to like for you to go play on the train tracks. What's that about? <laughs> yeah, on, on a few occasions. Yeah, yeah, we had a little pat together about some mythical creatures that ran up and down the uh, the Burlington Northern Corridor. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a fun little uh, little getup we had. It was kind of a bonding experience, but it was also it was uh, a bonding experience, right? Yeah, go play right. on the train tracks. <laughs> Now, where is the Seattle Portland. or where, are, where is this? Portland or where? Uh, this is located about, oh, I'd say an hour and 15 minutes uh, northeast of Seattle, a little town called Goldbar, Washington. Oh, how uh, cool. Yeah. yeah and so, but why would he tell you to go play on the tracks? I don't get that. What kind of dad would say that? 
well, it wasn't necessarily let's go play on the mm-hmm. tracks. It was oh, the dweebs are coming. You know, let's go, let's go, let's go see what they brought us. And every time the Amtrak train went by, well, the dweebs ran on the train, and the dweebs are these mythical creatures. And that your dad you know, made up something. Your dad made up. It was yeah. something he made up, and yeah. I kind of made up uh, a vision of these who these mythical creatures were, and kind of imprinted them in my head. But you know, it was a good way for us to get get away and talk, uh, and um, yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, and just. Maybe if it was a bad day, maybe, you know, if you had a bad day, maybe if I had a bad day, you know, it's kind of like something to similar to surfing, you know, or skydiving. You got a bad day. You just want to go out and you want to let go. You want to restart. You want to reset the brain and refresh. And, you know, as a young kid, saw that. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. As a young kid, right. You can't necessarily go jump out of a plane or you can't, you know, being in the Pacific Northwest, jump on a surfboard. So, you know, you got to you got to uh, you got to improvise. You got to pick up different ways to kind of do that. And I think that was a good way for him to, you know, kind of kind of do that, because my mindset was is 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 always been like that. You know, if I if I got a bad day or something or I just need to go to the gym and work out and get right it on. Right. Well, so, all I know I'm, is that I just still don't buy it because, I mean, I understand that your dad would sneak out and put candy on the tracks. And after the train would come, you would say, oh, the the dweebs were here and left candy. I'm honestly not so sure about your dad's. Mental faculty. <laughs> you know. the track. It wasn't on the tracks. <laughs> oh no, I'd go right into the train. <laughs> yeah. Hey, go play on the train tracks. Maybe, you know. But no, I think that's really cool because your father was trying to find ways to creatively engage with you. And, you know, a father kind of knows his son, his children, each child individually, uh, knows kind of what makes them tick better than they do. And uh, you try to find a way to engage with them where, you know, where they're coming from. Uh, but a- so Alan uh, Murray and Gregor Murray are here with us, and I would, let's just get a little bit of back a little bit of background story first on why Alan Murray would want his child to go play on the railroad tracks. But Alan, you were you were raised Catholic, right? Yes, yes, cradle Catholic, yes. <laughs> and uh, I uh, I was always pretty serious about the faith, you know, more so when I got a little older, but. Uh, um, I, Gregor has always been interested in a, a lot of things in his whole life. He, he'd always want to explore all different uh, avenues and territories, and I let him explore the faith. Um, you know, after actually, actually after eighteen, and he. Uh, and I want to hear more about you. Your your walk with the Lord first. Yeah, you were you, I, were, uh, you were you were born in a cradle, and you just stayed there the whole time in the cradle, or you well, ever get out walk in the faith, or what? I, uh, you kind of yeah, fast forwarded there on me, you know. I you know, went to Catholic school, and uh, I, you know, and uh, were I, the nuns mean to you? No, once when I had a lot of hair, they used to fun <laughs> used to make fun of my hair, and you know, because kind of kinky and everything. And but, uh, I mean, I've heard about that nuns being mean to me, but the nuns that I was with were awesome. Yeah, so I don't know where that uh, comes from. They were they were, they strict, were, but they were awesome, time, but awesome for the most part. Yes. I'd say he lived a pretty good life. He's a he was a bachelor for thirty plus years. Yeah. And so you <laughs> you what is that when you were uh, is that when you began to pursue the Carmelite uh, thing or yeah. was it before that? I was a, a you know as a single man I, uh, I I was involved in the secular order and uh, when it came to I was about thirty years old after six years of formation I kind of chickened out and I didn't follow through with them. My mother followed me and. Uh, and she took her final promises, and I, I came back um, about 20 years later, stayed in touch with the community, and uh, about three years ago, I took my final promises with the Carmelites. So, so, so you were, as a young man, what, what was it that drew you, uh, wanting to go deeper with God? Well, the, the contemplative life, the silent life, finding Jesus and adoration, uh, the quieter aspect of uh you know, Catholic life, and and uh, it always attracted me the most, um, finding God in silence, and I, I, um, and that's what drew me to the Carmelites, and then finding John on the cross, and and studying John the cross, yeah, uh, and you know, inspired me and attracted me. And and what would you say? What do you have? Do you have a recollection of that moments of consolation with the Lord, or an infusion of His grace, or do you have a moment of, of when that uh, when a deeper conversion took place, or was it just a gradual? Probably 27 years old. 27 years old is when I started reading Imitation of Christ and mm. and uh, books like that. And and uh, I, I think 27 years old is when I, I, I took a, a you know an interest in in 
learning more about the Carmelites and and uh, was it because Ther Therese, of, Therese of Lisieux loved imitation of Christ? You know, it was her favorite yes, little book. Yes, yes. Did that and, was that part of the thread? Yes, yeah, she yeah. was part of the whole equation there. You know, and I, I it, it means a lot. Carmelite spirituality. It, we're all called to something in the Catholic Church. It seemed the Christian life and uh, the Carmelite order is is where. I find the most peace and, and security and uh, gives me strength in the active of men's apostle that we have in the Pacific Northwest. And, and, uh, it, but that it, was uh, the draw. There was a draw towards uh, solitude. There was a draw yes. towards intimacy with God. And yes. uh, there, was a, there was this, this, this uh, draw towards Teresa of Avila, John of the Cross, and Therese of Lisieux. We're talking with Alan Murray and Gregor Murray, father and son here. It's the first time we've ever, ha ever had a father and son on, on um, our radio show. I don't know why. I've had fathers, and then I've had their sons, but never at the same time. And I think we've got to start doing this more often. But your draw to the contemplative life is really just a draw to go, to go deeper with God. Uh, if you guys want to uh, know more about uh, Deep Adventure Ministries, you can go to our website, deepadventure.com. And it's time for you to go there if you're wanting to go with our, us on our pilgrimage to Greece. We go there in uh, May of 2019. And uh, we're going to be going to all the places St. Paul visited. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And uh, in the end, we get to take a three-day cruise to, the, to uh, Ephesus and then to the island of Patmos, where John had his vision, and then to the place where Cindy and I were betrothed, the island of Santorini. So if you want to come with us, you better do something about it now. Go to deepadventure.com and, and join us on our pilgrimage to Greece. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. My co-adventure guides today are Alan Murray and Gregor Murray. I met them both at the Honolulu Men's Conference, the Oahu Men's Conference uh, in, uh, in Hawaii about two months ago. And it's kind of funny because I, I was one of the three people that kind of got that conference started there. And uh, it's so funny because I was supposed to be one of the speakers at the first conference. And then uh, Hawaii Five-O called and said, we want you as a guest star. And I asked the men, they go, you, you got to go be on Hawaii Five-0. So I did that. And I think it's, in a way it was kind of a call from the Lord because he was saying, your ministry isn't meant just for this island. Your ministry is to, supposed to open doors beyond this island. And, uh, and so uh, that's kind of what happened. And being on Hawaii Five-0 kind of gave me a little bit of street cred in some ways um, to take the message further than just to the, in the islands of Hawaii. But we, we were there. We were filming season three of Long Ride Home. And uh, the conference had gotten delayed because of... Uh, one of the hurricanes that was coming by. And so it ended up that Doug Barry and Jason Jones and, and myself ended up being the speakers with like one week's notice. And that's where I met these two guys, these two studs, Alan Murray and Gregor Murray, uh, <laughs> men who really love the Lord and love the life of adventure. But I want to talk to Alan again a little bit about this call to the contemplative life because there really can be no greater adventure than that. And I remember... As a young man, when I was 19, going to the Benedictine Monastery in Pecos, New Mexico, and uh, having, a, having had a deep conversion experience a half a year earlier, and asking them about, should I seek out the contemplative life? And uh, their response was, well, that's not for everybody. You need to pray about it. But then I read the writings of John Paul II, and he says it's for everyone. It, you know, to some degree or another, God's calling us all into this deeper place of seeking his face. And, um, and I wrote my first book, Deep in the Wave, A Surfing Guide to the Soul. It's really an allegory. It's about my life, but it's kind of more of an allegory about the different stages of the contemplative life. I don't know if you, pick, if you read the book or you picked up on that, but I, I take people through that journey of detachment and, and illumination and, and all of those things. So tell me, on this adventure in your contemplative life, are there any times when you're in prayer when you're just like, you're just like giddy, like, like, you know, uh, God whispered something to you and it makes you want to tell the world or, or Alan, give us a little bit more insight into your, in your contemplative journey. Sometimes I find inspiration, you know, to do something in, in my half hour of, of prayer every day. Um, I am tempted because I am quite active, an active person. I'm, I'm athletic like my son is, and I get tempted to kind of sometimes walk away after 15 minutes and, and, 
you know, I, I just hang in there. And that's the tough part about it, you know, is just hanging in there with that half hour we're called to. And I have sometimes the, the devil comes in there and he gives me, a, you know, um, he gets in there and tempts me to, you know, forget about this contemplative life. You're an active person. You've got this big men's ministry in Seattle. That's more important than 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 anything, you know, and it really isn't. It's that half hour with with Jesus Himself and and the intimacy with Him, talking with Him. Because without Jesus, we uh, and and that time with Him, um, we can't get anywhere. And a number a high, one, go ahead. I'm sorry. In a hyper guy like me, you know, um, you know, it's easy just to, not to just stay put, you know. And mm -hmm. I I'm tempted, you know, a lot of the times to to just you know, leave my half hour of prayer every day to, to be more active. And, and like Father Larry Richards says, that half hour is for him alone and nobody else, you know. Hey, so. you, know what, you know what really helps that with that? Is a good cigar. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I, I got to say, my, my, uh, my prayer time with the Lord in the evenings, in the mornings, of course, it's briefer, but my, my prayer time with the Lord in the evenings greatly extended when I began to enjoy a cigar with the Lord. Me, Jesus and G.K. Chesterton, you know, enjoying a good cigar. And uh, it really does. It be, there's something tactile about the cigar that makes you remember you're there to pray or in sometimes doing Lectio Divina or sacred reading. But, but there's something really, uh, I have ADHD. I mean, I'm always on the move, you know, but, but there is the first, you know, and I, my ministry gets very involved. I have a business and I have my ministry, but sometimes ministry gets in the way of our primary ministry, which is ministering to the Lord. Yes. Gregor, yeah. do you remember seeing your father uh, in prayer when you were younger? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, in many cases, whether it be at home or whether it be in mass at the parish. Um, yeah, you know, and as a young kid, you know, you kind of, um, it kind of goes back to common law, right? So we all have to kind of develop some sort of, if we see good, sometimes more or less we're going to do good. And by that, you know, at a young age, if you see your father, you know, doing something, you more or less, you want to model that. And so, yeah, absolutely, seeing him in prayer and sometimes, you know, reflecting on that. And, I mean, that's good, whether that's God intervening in my life in a way because I'm a young man and I am praying and I'm just, you know, maybe I'm getting those spiritual vibes from that. But, yeah, modeling that and seeing that he, uh, him engage in prayer, you know, definitely, um, it affects absolutely how I turned out and how, it, how just any child can turn out. If you, if you have a good role model and a good structure in a child's life, you know, the, the future path projected for that child is going to be more vast and it's going to grow, right? If you put a kid, if you put anyone around, say, a, you know, a deviant socioeconomic environment, they're going to, more or less, they're going to go downhill. So, you know, by having God, having a good structure in your life, you're going to grow, you know, and it was a good combination in my life. You know, having, having my dad give me such a strong spiritual foundation and then the combination with, uh, my athleticism, my wanting to just lift weights and to always be about, you know, just go, 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 go. Those two things just made me flourish, you know? So yeah, absolutely. When I would see him in prayer and stuff, I would model that, you know, ask questions. And uh, my dad was more, he's always more into like, uh, you know, theology of, uh, uh, you know, of my faith. If I had a question, he would really dig deep and give me the root cause of like, okay, this is what this is from. Or, you know, I say, you know, well, what is the training? A good example, Bear, um, when I was a young kid, um, my father and my mother said to me, you know, it was kind of hard as an adolescent growing up saying, well, how can three people be in one, right? How do you, how, how, how do three, how do three things go to one? And they gave me this good example of these candles. It took three candles, right? Three separate candles. So you have three tangible candles. And when they're burning, you put them together. And as you put them together, they create one flame. And it's pretty cool, especially, you know, for me, because I'm saying, wow, OK, yeah, I can I can now visually see this. You know, you can't always visually see the Trinity, three persons in one. But, um, you know, they did. He did. They, they, they put good examples like that in my life. And, you know, sometimes you got to get down on the kids level to, to get them to understand. And uh, I mean, it was. But the very fact yeah. that you were asking those kind of questions. Uh, says something. The very fact that you were asking those kind of questions, you know, says something, you know, I know, uh, you know, for, for me to see, you know, I, what, one of the things we know is that, you know, the, the statistics about uh, 
what it takes for a children to stay in the faith when they grow older and stay in the church. Sure. If a woman uh, is the head of the household and the husband doesn't go to church, I mean, leading the yeah. household spiritually, uh, the kids right. see her prayer, they see her devotion, they see her go to Mass, she takes them to Mass. But the father isn't there. Less than a third of the kids will stay in the faith. But if the father and the mother both go, it goes up to something like 80% stay in the faith. But the interesting statistic is that if only the father takes spiritual leadership in the home, still three-fourths of the children will stay in the faith, even without the woman involved at all. The leadership of your father, and when I say leadership, that's not him telling you to go to church. That's him going to church with you. That's you seeing him pray, and that's you, right. you having a deeper dialogue with him to know that the same questions you're asking, you know, he's asked once before too. Sure, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Good structure. And the other thing about it I like about your relationship is that you did things together. Uh, right. that you, you know, there's a verse that says, while you're on your way with your child, uh, teach him these things. And I always picture a father walking along a river, talking with his son, seeing things in nature and saying, this is like this and that is like that. And, and from just being together, did you guys ever do any projects together other than uh, athletic oh, things? Absolutely. Yeah, we went, actually, we took a road trip up to Surrey, B.C. one time. We took a, a 80-something-year-old pickup truck. No, it was a, sorry, a 19, what was that, an 87? It was an 86. Yep. An 86 F-150. We took it up to Canada, and we uh, went and bought a shed, actually. And we bought this shed, and we took it back, and we uh, we built it. You know, it took some time. But, yeah, we, we, we've done projects together. We've done, we used to do all kinds of stuff, installing trench lines for power, building sheds. You know, and plus all the regular activities like hunting and fishing and the, all the sports. I don't know what sport he yeah. didn't play. Hockey is one that is not really popular in the Pacific did he, North. Did he play curling? Did he do curling? No, I didn't curling. Get that far north. <laughs> <laughs> I I was gonna, <laughs> we were in Lake Huron last week, and I was going to ask him, so uh, is there any curling on TV? And I looked over, and there was like this curling, this miniature curling set. I bet it up. Better not make fun of that. It's a pretty serious sport. No, it's pretty serious up there. So, that, so the, only, only other, the only sport you really didn't do was curling. We're talking with right. Alan Murray who uh, Greg, and Gregor Murray. Alan Murray is heading up um, uh, is part of the men's ministry up there in the Northwest. We're going to talk to you guys more about uh, that sort of thing when we get back. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, you know, we've been talking about the contemplative journey. Uh, my first book, uh, Deep in the Wave, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, really is meant to to outline that journey. It was an Amazon bestseller, and you can go to our website and find that. And my other book, Deep Adventure, The Way of, the Way of Heroic Virtue. Uh, really, that book and what we talk about is manly virtue. It's almost like, ooh, you better not talk about manly virtue, right? We should talk about masculine virtue. But no, we're going to be politically incorrect and, and challenge men to be men again. Uh, this is Bear Wozniak at the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm with my adventure guides, Gregor Murray and his father, Alan Murray. So you guys used to hunt together. What was your favorite thing to hunt? Oh, man, upland birds. Upland you know, birds. We, we had a couple Labradors that did okay uh, for retrieving, but I always liked the upland because I just like to go. I like to constantly be on the move. So, yeah, we hunted a lot of pheasant and grouse up here in the Pacific oh, Northwest. That's more beautiful than, than, yeah. than uh, pheasant hunting, I think. Absolutely, waking up early in the morning, getting out, making a getting a good start, fighting that resistance. You know, that's the first thing, fighting that alarm clock. Hey, tell fighting me this. about tell me about that. that. I think that's a really important point. Every morning, you know, you're faced with resistance, whether it be getting up, going to work, whether it be going to the gym, anything. You know, and you just gotta, you gotta, you can't look back on the plow. You know, you can't look back on anything that's negative. So you just gotta get up and do it. And whether you know, I'm a single guy. I don't have a, I don't have a wife or kids, but. You know, that may change, but, you know, you got all these goals and, and things you want to do in life. And, and you know, and, and sometimes when I get up and I'm just like, oh, maybe I'll sleep in a half hour late today or whatever. You got to realize, you know, you, you got to think, you know, no, you know, you got to you got you got to work for the Lord, you know, work at it with all your heart as, as you know, working for the Lord, you know, not not for men. And there's challenges every single day, you know, whether that be the Debbie Downer at work or whether that be the guy that cuts you off on your way to work. And it's so easy to get, you know, caught up in, in anger. But that's the devil wanting to get in there, right? He wants to get in there and he wants to feed. But, you know, that resistance, you know, there's resistance with everything. You know, it could be, 
losing weight, could be going to work. It's just, that's everything. But you got to fight through it. You got to persevere. And I think, you know, the only way to really do that is with prayer. It's crazy how much prayer, it's free. It's the most easiest thing one can do. And let me tell you, if I didn't have prayer in my life, I don't know who I would be. I really don't because I have gotten so much temptation and so much things that come into my life. And the prayer is such a well, a very uh, balancing thing for my life. Um, when I pray, I just go into this psychological uh, kind of trance sometimes. And it's like a, it's like a drug that just overcomes my body. It's the most amazing thing. And, you know, when I tell people, I don't know how to pray, I don't know how to do that. You know, you don't know. You, you, there is no real, w real way to pray. You know, you talk to the God like as if I'm talking to you. And you would be amazed, you know, it's a simple things. So you get confused in life, you know, and, and sometimes I just say to myself, if I get confused, like, God, show me what you want me to do. Tell me what you want me to do. And let me tell you, he will answer your prayers. He has answered mine in so many ways, so many ways. And sometimes you laugh and you'll chuckle to yourself and say, wow, I, I can't believe that, you know, that that just happened or, or whatever. And the funny thing about it, uh, Bear, is it's so easy to get off track. You know, when God starts blessing you and you get all these blessings, then you're like, oh, okay, let me take a step back and sit in the recliner now. Let me relax. But, you know, you, you, you can't forget to stop praying. You can't forget to, to stop acknowledging him because, you know, you, you're doing good works. You're doing what he wants to do. And it's like when you get, you know, you got to continue to get, you know. And um, and I, it's just in my life, you know, I can tell when I don't pray. Because when, when I don't. Yeah. 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 Amen. When like, I Yvonne, like Yvonne plugged the, the, the plug. What were you going to say, Alan? Nothing. Yeah. Prayer is uh, the key to everything, you know, and, and a lot of people think it's a waste of time. And Oh, yeah, and man, especially. Yeah. It can get boring and all that kind of stuff. And you, it's one thing about, you know, being a man and all that kind of stuff. If uh, I don't know if I'm an example of that or not, but uh, just hanging in there, just even a half hour a day and just sitting still is the biggest challenge of my life. <laughs> it really the, you know, that you think about this, a, a horse, that in Proverbs it describes the horse, you know. And at one point, you know, the power and the, the grittiness and the ready to fight. And at some point towards the end, it says, and he hears the officers roar. Yeah. The horse hears the officers roar. There's a verse that says there'll be a voice behind you saying, this is the way, follow it. And there's another one that says it'll be shouting to you. But we're not listening. We need to hear the officers roar. We need to hear... The Holy Spirit speak to us, or how do we know to enter into the battle? How do we know, you know, how to engage in the battle? And there is a battle, and we're born into adversity. And it's like Jordan Peterson, I think he says, "Get up and clean your room first things." Right, like you were saying, get up in the morning. I think Stephen Covey said the same thing. You know, uh, get up on time, and then he, and then of course he had the, the, this. He used to have this thing called the organizer. People or, day organizer. They'd organize their days. Get up, clean your room, organize your house, and get to work. You know, it's kind of like first things first. Well, the first thing you do when you get up is you get on your knees and you say, I will serve. And then you spend that time with the Lord and you're listening to the officers roar. You know, you want to hear the roar of the, of the early church fathers, of the saints, of, uh, of the catechism, of the Bible, and being still and being able to hear God say, do this. And you begin to do that and you go, it doesn't seem to be working out. Uh, but then you realize if I, you, you, we got four steps forward, and then the Lord begins to turn you a little bit to the right and a little bit to the left. But if all you're doing is sitting on your couch, to put it nicely, <laughs> God can't direct your path at all. So to begin to hear God's inspiration and to begin to move on it and let him direct you. Think about St. Paul when he was uh, on his um, second missionary trip. He's heading out from Antioch, and he's heading up north, and uh, he thinks he's going to go minister in, in Galatia and in Asia and in Phrygia. And instead, the Lord just says, do an end around, go all the way over to Traus, and then go up to Greece and minister in Macedonia. So he had these plans, but he was buffeted constantly but, uh, and, and redirected and redirected. But the fact that he was up moving, pursuing God's vision, and then God opened the right doors. So that's what I love about what you guys are doing in the men's ministry. It's like, you don't even know, why am I, why am I the one that's doing this? But isn't it true that at one point you got a little tap on the shoulder and said, hey, you got a minute? Yes. And then God doesn't look for the most gifted or uh, he looks for the person who's the most willing. Uh, and yeah. you guys are on a mission now together, father and son. You're on a mission. Tell, tell me about the genesis of the men's movement up there in, 
in the Northwest and, and then what you're up to these days. Can you tell us, Alan? Yeah. By the way, so, we're speaking with Alan Murray and Gregor Murray, a father and son, father and father and son. Well, it's a long story, but I'll make it as quick as possible here. I, it just started from a men's study group out of St. Mary of the Valley's parish in Monroe. And, and uh, you know, it, uh, the, you know, the study group lasted about three years. So and, wait a minute, uh, how did that study group start? Well, I was asked by a woman at the parish down there if I could lead a, a men's ministry, men's study group at the church. And uh, I did. I said no at first because I'm more of a co-ed guy. I don't want to get involved in the, a men's ministry. But I, I said yes eventually. And one thing led to another. And I asked the Archbishop of Seattle uh, personally. I got the permission from... Uh, Father Bloom down there at St. Mary of the Valley to ask him. I asked him, and he said he'd uh, he'd come out uh, to the St. Mary of the Valley's uh, parish, and from, we took it from there and just started a men's conference from that. This is so cool. This is this is it. The women that are listening right now, they have almost a visceral feeling about the need for men's ministry. You know, Long yes. Ride Home is a very manly reality TV show about motorcycles. We have it on EWTN and. I should also say it's on iTunes and Prime Video and Google Play. But when you talk to the men, they go, man, I really dig your show. It's really cool. It really changed my life. The women walk up almost desperate. Thank God there's something like this we can send our men to. Thank you. They're like, they're clinging to me. And I think about it was a woman that came up to you and yes. said, start a ministry. I think that's so profound, so profound that a woman yeah. instigated this, but then you responded. So um, this is no small thing, the birthing of uh, – and how many men came to the first meeting? First, the, first the first men's conference, there was about 500 guys. Oh, my God. Uh, Archbishop Deacon Harold was there for the first one, the first keynote. Uh, and uh, we, we have a, a tough situation. We didn't keep it at St. Mary the Valley. We went to a different parish every year. Uh, and we were obedient to the host pastor. We got about the same amount of guys every year. That's until... an evangelist's heart moving it around. But yeah, I want to know this. What happened between conference to conference? You said small men's groups started out of that or what? Yeah, we had a small men's uh, study group at St. Mary of the Valley. Had about you know, 20 guys that show up every every month is what it would study different saints or whatever, or different topics of the faith, uh, sacraments or what, whatever. And uh it, 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 it grew out of that study group at St. Mary of the Valley. And then after, uh, after about three years, we, we took it, uh, you know, just, you know, to the parish. And after that, it goes to a different parish every year. And this so, is the first minute, are you saying, So did you start the Bible study first or have the conference first? We had the study group first. Okay, that's what I think is significant. And, yes. and when you started it, did you have one or two men or did you have 20 right away? We had about 20 right away. It was promoted pretty well in the parish. And well, what do you mean by promoted? Did you talk to people face-to-face -face or was put in bulletins? It, it was promoted through, the, you know, the lady that I asked me to do the study group. She was the faith formation coordinator there, and uh, she helped he, She helped quite a bit getting it going at the parish. Well, and, I just think this is so significant, and there's men right now that are listening who need to start a men's uh, Bible study or a men's group in their church, and we're going to talk about this new— this new uh, uh, kind of collaboration that's taking place among all the men involved in men's ministry in America. Tell us what the name of that group is again. The St. Mary's... Uh, no, no, the, the, the bigger group, the one that... Oh, Seattle Catholic Men's No, Conference. no, the bigger group. Oh, the National Catholic Alliance. Oh, yes. Okay, we're going to talk about the National Catholic Alliance for Men's Ministries uh, when we get back. But isn't that cool how we just kind of went up that layer like yes. that? It starts out small. It only takes two... Or three men, better with three, to start. That's what Ron. That's what we did uh, out out in uh, Hawaii. Three of us got together, started as that man as you program, and and then it became that big conference where you and I met five years later. So yes. we're talking with uh, Alan Murray and Gregor Murray, father and son, who love the Lord, and we'll be right back to talk more about how you can get involved in starting a men's ministry. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm coming to you from Cocoa Beach, Florida today. Um, we're uh, talking with Alan Murray and Gregor Murray, and we're not here to entertain you. We're here to change the world. We're here to rock the world. We want to change. 
We want to put, change the world, make it, uh, make it come back to being right side up. And uh, Alan, you were talking to us about how you started a small men's group, and then you had a big parish uh, meeting with 500 men, and then it just continued to have this annual uh, men's conference. But now there's something kind of new and exciting uh, for men who are involved in men's ministry or want to start a men's ministry. Uh, and in fact, I think there's a meeting tonight, isn't there? Yeah, there's a phone that's conference fun. tonight. Yeah, yeah that's that, now that's of course this is a a delayed recording, but this is a gathering of all the leaders in the men's movement who are there to help each other, collaborate with, collaborate with each other. And there's no more important time right now than for men's ministry to come forth because manliness is being challenged at every level in society. And from what we've recently seen in the scandal of, in the church, uh, we need manly virtue again. So talk to us about the vision uh, for the what is it called again? The the national, uh, the Catholic Men's Leadership Alliance, um, and it's uh, a national it's, alliance. It's, it's, what is it called again? Uh, the Catholic Men's Leadership Alliance. Um, okay. And uh, it's it's with uh, the board members. Uh, Father Larry Richards is part of it, Kevin O'Brien up there, Deacon Harold Burke Sivers, and a couple of three other guys, and uh, they're part of the board up there. And uh, they're getting us all together across the country. Uh all these different men's movements like Columbus, Texas, Austin, Austin Texas, uh, Milwaukee. There's kind of the flagship group up there um, that uh, was a, a great part of this, getting this going. And, and we're trying to connect all the different men's ministries throughout the country and have an alliance to give all of the different uh, areas like Seattle, feed us all the different, um, you know, different uh, men's uh, ministries, study uh, material like That Man Is You or Deacon Harrell's Behold the Man, uh, Father Larry Richards, his material, maybe your material. Yeah, my, feet- my, book, my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, is meant to be used in a small men's group. Um, that's it. That was its target. People can just read it, too, but it's meant to be read in that environment. You're right. And to help us connect, you know, just help us connect and so we can all support each other, you know, mm-hmm. throughout the country. And they have a magisterial advisory board with the proposed, I saw the names on there, they're just proposed right now, Cardinal Burke, Cardinal Dolan, Bishop Barron, we're all getting together, and it's going to probably go to the U.S. Catholic bishops, this men's uh, alliance, and and, and um, just get us together, and so the bishops fully support this, which, which will really give us a lot of cloud. It already has a lot of cloud now, but even more, you know, so. And how did you get mixed up in that? Why are you involved? I went to the men's conference in Milwaukee in 2016, and I got to know Kevin O'Brien up there, and he, he invited me this June to come up to, to Milwaukee. They, they formed an alliance of all these different leaders throughout the country, and he wanted me to come, and I, I, I went up to Milwaukee with all these, these guys. I've never been in a room with more testosterone in my life. And, uh, and it's, kind of, it's kind of cool, isn't it? It's really it's, it's right. When you're in a men's conference, it's, just, it's so cool because— uh, you know, in fact, I remember the first men's conference I went to, it was in the Tampa area. Father Larry Richards was there and there are a few women snuck in the back of the room. And I like, they like, they, they, they ran for their lives because <laughs> Father Larry <laughs> went all guns blazing. It was like, we don't want to be here to hear this, you know? So yeah, we need that. Iron sharpens iron. Yeah. How can iron people sh- become involved? Uh, is, is there a path yet, a protocol yet for men who want to start a ministry uh, in their church or who, who have a ministry, how they can become uh, um, in, involved uh, in this support network. Yes, they have a, a, you know, they have a lot of guys up there. They're going to, you know, I think uh, No Man Left Behind is a, a, and the dynamic men's groups. They're trying to, the toughest thing about this ministry is getting a lot of these parishes on board to have a men's ministry in their parishes, and they're feeding the materials into us. And the dynamic men's group inside a parish is like the, the big key to this, and they're really assisting with that. You know, let's get each parish, you know, uh, going uh, with the men's ministry, and that's the key to this whole movement, I think. It's, it's parish by right. parish, right? Yes, yes. And, and they do have, and Milwaukee's got this big flagship parish captain network that uh, is mentoring us as of this moment in Seattle. So yeah, it's like replicating the, something that, like the That Man Is You program or other yeah. ministries. What, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. No. Uh, there, and, and what I love about what's happening with these men's ministries, too, is you see men that are involved in business or in other areas of excellence in their careers, 
and they're taking those those best practices and gifts that they have, and they're utilizing them uh, for the kingdom of God. Not that the kingdom of God is built on uh, programs. It's built on prayer. Right. But, right. Uh, but then having had the inspiration of the Lord and the power of the Holy Spirit, we want to have a best practices approach to everything that we do. And that's what, that's what I see with these ministries. I just think it's, it's, it's exciting. Hey, when am I going to come speak at your conference? We'd love to have you. We'd love to have you up here in, in Seattle, you know, and, and uh, there'll be a time. I guarantee it. There'll be a time when you're up here. We, we're trying to get Cardinal Burke. We have Doug Berry this year. It's, well, if you, you want know, to get we, a couple of rookies like that, go ahead. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, really, I really have a fire in my gut to go out and speak to men's conferences. Um, uh, really have a fire in my belly. And, and, and want to and want to get out there and, and do more of that. We you know we have a lot of work to do with our reality TV show and our um, you know, our radio show and our morning catechisms. But I got a fire in my belly so bad to get out and speak to more men's conferences. So I hope anybody out there listening, if you're thinking about, I uh, probably they're thinking a year ahead of time. And I'd love to be invited to come out. Hey, Gregor, tell me what 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 is it? it, it what is the fire in your belly right now? I, I oh. get this feeling like pent up energy from you. <laughs> oh man, you know, uh, I ask God a lot lately, you know, to, I, I, I know I've got a calling to preach and to be, a uh, to be a man to put on armor and go to battle for God. And I guess right now I'm just trying to, you know, I'm trying to hone that in. Um, and by doing that, you know, I'd spread the word of God in other ways, How? you know, I, well, a lot at the gym, believe it or not. There's a lot of displaced Catholics at my gym where I currently work out at, and I always, you know, give them ALC in mass or, or or something. There's always an excuse for something, you know. But, you know, I try and model that. I, I'm one to always do the sign of the cross. You know, whenever I get under the bench press, whenever I get under the squat rack, I'm there. I'm I'm doing and it. And you better under the squat rack. Yeah, bench press right. and squat, squat rack can really humble you fast. You know? It can, yeah. That way it will come crashing down. Uh, so I'm always out there. I, 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 you know, I make it aware and, um, I, I go to battle for, for the Lord in many different ways. You know, on an occasion, one time I was down in California, down by Oceanside and this young gentleman came up to me and I don't know, God put me in his life for a reason. He's pretty much Amen. telling me that he did. He did. He was telling me that he just didn't care. He was a young man. He's only 19, but he wanted to grow older than he, than he, he wanted to grow up overnight. And, and, and knowing he was down, he was depressed, and he pretty much was like at suicidal rock bottom. And I just, you know, I was there for a, a given moment to talk to this man about uh, his life and what he could become, you know. And if you put in the hard work, if you do, you can do anything you put your mind to. But the biggest thing about it was, you know, turn to God, ask God, you know, for for help. You know, for, like, like I mentioned previously in this in this in this cast. You know, you don't know. There's not a special way to prayer. Anyone can pray. You know, it's like talking to God. You know, I used to talk to God when I was a kid on the playground, you know, when the kids didn't want to play with me, you know. But I feel like God puts people in my life for a reason, you know, uh, whether it's <laughs> whether it's women, you know, he puts them in your life for a reason and he takes them out. You know, I love to preach to God, you know, and, and the thing of it is with faith is. Faith comes for is a, is a step uh, forward from within one, right? Mm. I can't force you to faith believe in God. Faith is an action. Faith is a is a movement of action. Correct, correct. Yeah, it's a it's an action. You know, and for me to go out and to preach, you know, and I and I tell these people about how how prayer, how when, when you have God in your life, how how your just life unfolds. You know, things come together. You know, He's going to show you what you're going to become in life, and sometimes you may not figure out what your purpose is overnight. You know, but in time, in prayer, you know, be patient, be still, and know that I am the Lord. Right? You're not meant you got, to find it overnight. You're meant to. It's meant to be a journey of discovery with the Lord, right? It is a journey, you know. And well, tell, um, tell, go ahead. Uh, you know, we're at we're at a wrap up stage already. We're already we're already done. So we're in Hawaii. We're already Pauhana here. But um, yeah, I, it's I, I just, really uh, it's it's been a great adventure, man. You know, I, I've been going to the Hawaiian Islands now for just over four and a half years. I've returned, oh, I think like nine or ten trips now since I've been back. But kind of like you, I, I went to the Hawaiian Islands, and I've just, I've, I I don't know what it is, something psychologically, but, you know, my dad always gives me a hard time. He says, you can be content, you can be happy here in the Pacific Northwest, but, you know, Hawaii, no. I don't know what it is. It's a, it, it's a special being. It's a special The Lord being. draws you. You know, I, I just, I was, and I got, we got to take, we got to head out of here, but I was telling Cindy the other day when I left, 
at the beaches of California and became an inlander in Texas, I had a dream almost every night about the ocean. And I know it was the Lord drawing me back, you know, to, to do and to be what he had called me to be. We're talking with Alan Murray and his son, Gregor Murray, two powerful men of God who stand shoulder to shoulder, you know, sharing the gospel. What's the website they can go to if they want to find more out about the Alliance, uh, Alan? Do you know? I don't have the website uh, number right now. Uh, they haven't. They don't really have a web. They'll have a website up in in December. They okay. Well, they can go. They can contact us, and we'll connect them. You can go yes. to deepadventure.com. Okay. We want to invite everybody to go to our website uh, and uh, subscribe to our newsletter because if you do, we will email you the radio show the morning it's supposed to air on Saturday nights, and you can share that with your friends. So uh, thank you so much, man, for being with us. Uh, until next week, this is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You guys want to do a Viva Cristo Rey? Sure. Or, or, okay. Sure. You say Viva it. Cristo Rey. Viva Cristo Rey. And we'll do Aloha too. Aloha. Aloha. Okay. We'll talk to you guys right. next week. Ahui ho. Aloha. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10-episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com. 